The Cannabis Conversation. A European perspective on the emerging legal cannabis industry. Welcome to the Cannabis Conversation with Anuj Desai, where we explore the new legal cannabis industry by speaking to the professionals that are helping to shape it. On today's show, I have Dean Harris. Dean is co-founder of Tab Brands, which is a US company, and is a plant-based wellness company working with cannabis. Dean, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show, Anuj. Appreciate it. No, real pleasure. How are you doing today? I'm good. If you have to be someplace in the pandemic, there are worse places to be. Where in the world are you? In the middle of Connecticut, which is quite beautiful. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely. I'm very jealous. Well, we've got some good stuff to talk about today. We're going to touch on the idea of water solubility in cannabinoids. But as is customary, let's talk a bit about you to begin with. Could you give us a bit about your background? You know, what, what have you been doing before you got into cannabis and how and why did you get into it? Sure. So believe it or not, my, my family has been in the advertising, marketing and branding business in the New York area for over a hundred years. Wow. So I've been in the advertising, marketing and branding business for quite a long time. I have an incredibly formal marketing background. I, I studied marketing, MBA in marketing and international business, started my career on packaged goods, Procter & Gamble and Johnson & Johnson. That's a very traditional way to start. And then founded a, an advertising agency in New York City, co-founded and did a, a series of pretty interesting brands we worked on, Coca-Cola, J&J, Nestle's, M&M, Mars, Sotheby's, Citibank. So we did some respectable work. And during that time also, I, I was a, an adjunct professor of marketing at a couple of universities here in Connecticut. But in the late 90s, I was attracted to the internet business that was exploding. So I became the chief marketing officer of a series of consumer-facing first internet brands. I started with them when they were very small. Three of them went public. So they became, they all had market caps in excess of a billion dollars. And that was a, a, an incredibly fascinating experience. So that's basically my career. And then the way, the way I got into cannabis was, well, a few years ago, I hadn't, uh, I, I was, a, I was not uh, in very good shape physically. I, I had neglected to work out for a long, long time. So my wife said, listen, you know, I'd like to have you around for a lot longer. You should start working out with a trainer. So I started working out with a trainer and this guy said, you're not going to believe it. I invented this great product that's going to revolutionize the personal training industry. It's a protein product that is delivered in, in a better way. Help me write my patent. So, okay, great. So I helped him work on the patent. And we wrote it in a, in a way so that it was a delivery patent rather than a patent that would only make protein more available for personal trainers. We wrote it very broadly and we got it. We got our provisional patent a little more than three years ago. But then we started looking around for applications of this patent. And, and quite frankly, protein was interesting. Cannabis was really interesting. I mean, the cannabis space just jumped out at me for, for a couple of reasons. And we were, we were focusing on medical cannabis. So at that point, the medical cannabis industry in the United States was roughly $7 billion. And there were no dominant brands. And there was nobody leading the narrative. And medical cannabis did great good. So this, to me, seemed like a fantastic opportunity to build a big brand and a big business that could do good. And then also gain an outsized share of, of brand and, and of, of the narrative. So for the past couple of years, we've been, we've put together a team to produce what I'd, I'd love to tell you about a what we think is a really interesting technology, perfected the technology at scale at the point of production, built a really robust supply chain, and then have a series of products that we're selling both B2B and B2C. That's easier said than done in, in the cannabis space. I mean, everybody says that their business is different. This business is really different. <laughs> so it, it's been it's been an incredible amount of work, and it's taken, I think, longer than it should have. But we've we've done it what we we believe in the right way, and now have uh, products and technology that that 
really do represent a difference. We have a we have a consumer facing brand that we're very proud of, and we have a, a technology that can be delivered in any variety of, of plant based materials. So we are working in cannabis, but we're also working in in hemp derived CBD, minor cannabinoids, and now botanical terpenes. I'd be happy to answer any or all of that if you if you'd like. <laughs> Fantastic. So look, we'll get on to what Tab does in a second, but a lot of what you said was really interesting from a career change perspective, and it's a theme that I like to talk about every now and again. How much of it do you see as a career change, or are you just building a lot on, because you've had a long and successful career, to then switch to a new industry? Are you effectively taking all of the branding and marketing skills that you, you got and the product skills and applying it to this new sector? How yeah. do you see all that? Yes, and, and, and interestingly, in this sector, branding, marketing, and advertising don't seem to be valued. That does not seem to be prominent in this space. Is that a stage of maturity, do you think? I think so. I think so. I think we keep forgetting that that this industry is very much in its early stages. I mean, it seems as though we've all been doing this forever, but we really haven't. And in large part because of the because of the regulatory uncertainty, in many cases regulatory restrictions, it's an industry that has not attracted the same kind of investment, you know, professionals that some other industries have. I mean, there, there are a lot of constraints. So the constraints, in, in, in our view, represent both the, you know, both the opportunity and the, and the threat, and we see it as opportunity. So, but to answer your question, yeah, I think I'm taking my, my marketing and advertising and branding background and applying this to an industry that, that needs it. So I think I really welcome that. I, I'm a big proponent of that because I think sometimes I see in the industry people trying to reinvent the wheel and actually we need people with all that deep experience from the other sectors to sort of, I think you need to have an appreciation of cannabis and the peculiarities of, of the industry, but equally those sort of tried and tested skills that you uh, learned over the years are, are really valuable. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and I so I think that, that part of it has to do with the narrative. I mean, there's so many interesting stories that can be told with respect to cannabis and other plant-based wellness products that are not being told either forcefully or well. We hope to take the lead in doing that. Great opportunities ahead. Cool, so let's talk about Tab. You know, what, what exactly do you do? What kind of products do you have? Sure, well, let me first tell you a little bit about our technology, this patent pending thing that I referred to earlier, which, our patent lawyers say we're very close to getting our full patent. I mean, we've been issued uh, various additional items from the U.S. government, which is apparently a good sign. But essentially what we can do is we could make any oil-based substance truly water-soluble without using nanoparticle technology or microemulsion. I'd be happy to expand on both of those techniques later. But, but essentially what it means is we're delivering these active ingredients in any hot or cold liquid. They dissolve rapidly, eight seconds in hot liquid, 10 seconds in cold liquid. We're delivering our ingredient either as a powder or as a tablet. And by using this delivery system and this method of delivery, we think we're making it easier for people and caregivers to use cannabis, CBD, minor cannabinoids as part of their daily life because it's more convenient, it tastes better, it's more bioavailable, and it truly can be integrated into one's daily lifestyle, which is ultimately what, what we want for, for plant-based medicines. That's brilliant. Yeah, we'll come on to the, the kind of the science bit in a minute in terms of what all the, the microencapsulation and all those things mean and, and the difference that you guys have. So that's brilliant. You've got, you got a technology side to your business which you've developed and it was also you've got products as well? We do. We have a brand side. We, uh, we just launched a consumer-facing brand about 10 days ago uh, in the CBD space that's called Psy, S-I-G-H. And, our, of course, our tagline is breathe the, sigh, breathe the Sigh of Relief. So we're proud of that. We launched with two products. We launched with a, um, a CBD protein product, which is a, a chocolate vegan protein combined with per serving combined with 10 milligrams of, of broad spectrum CBD powder. And then we also launched a pet sprinkle, which is kind of interesting. Again, it's powder based and you sprinkle it on the top of your pet's wet or dry food. And then next quarter, 
we'll be launching what we're, we call a CBD mixin powder. This is a powder that comes in a, in a food grade sachet. You place it in any hot or cold liquid, it dissolves instantly, and it actually takes on the flavor of that liquid. So if you were to mix it in water, it would taste like water. If you were to mix it in chicken soup, it would taste like chicken soup. If you were to mix it in Guinness, it would taste like Guinness. Just a little British reference there. <laughs> that's an Irish brand. It's an Irish one, be careful. <laughs> yeah. um, but that, to me, integrating something into food and drink is a, is a great delivery system. And so we are selling our product directly uh, to consumers uh, branded. We also do white label where we'll provide our material for other people. And then, of course, what's interesting is our products come as in powder form. So they can be integrated quite seamlessly at the point of production for any manner of, of food or beverage. So we think that kind of flexibility will have great growth opportunities going forward. Yeah, fantastic. There's, there's so much you can do there, isn't there? You know, we're talking about the business side of things. How has COVID affected your, you know, the business in general and, and the stage of evolution that you're in? Sure. Well, I think that there's more demand for our product now just because one of the things that, that cannabinoids seem to solve for are pain, anxiety, inflammation, insomnia. And certainly people tend to be more anxious during this period of time. So there is a greater demand for our product. I think like a lot of folks, we are, from a production standpoint, it slowed things down a little bit because the, the production facilities we use have been affected by COVID. You know, their workers have gotten it. They have restrictions. It's, it's harder to get materials back and forth. Deliveries have slowed down. I don't know if that's the case in the UK, but in the United States, even formally reliable delivery services like UPS and, and FedEx take a lot, lot, lot longer to, to deliver. So I do think that part of the business has been slowed. But in general, our products have become more prominent. And we very much see our products as an alternative to prescribed pharmaceuticals. So with more information and more awareness about plant-based wellness alternatives, our products, I think, are becoming more and more popular and will continue to do so. It's great news, great news. And then also from the, <clears throat> I guess, corporate side, have you, have you been looking to fundraise for your business? No, and no we haven't, actually. We've, we're funding our business out of, out of revenue. So the, the good news is my partner and I own the company, but we're, we're really not beholding to anybody other than the quality of our offerings and consumers. Yeah. And this comes from somebody who has had experience with, with fundraising before. I'll just give you an example. So I, I, I mentioned before that, that I was the chief marketing officer of a number of internet tech facing brands. And one of them was a, an internet phone company called Vonage. I, I know it was in England because we marketed there. So we raised $658 million before the IPO from, you know, some fairly respectable VCs, NEA, Bain Capital, et cetera. And as a marketer, I got to spend a lot of it because I was in charge of customer acquisition. So that was fun. But we didn't want to use that model. I mean, we wanted to use the model of, of sort of organic growth, funding it ourselves. We wanted to make certain that our products and services and supply chain were, were really solid and efficacious before we, we started rolling out more heavily. So the answer to your question is we're not fundraising. But ironically, this is, I don't want this to be a, you know, a, a flip comment, but I mean, I get all of these press releases from, from companies that have raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and continue to do so. And, you know, I'm looking at their results and in certain cases, our revenue is higher than theirs. So anyway, it, it's, it's a different approach. Yeah. The best kind of investment is revenue. <laughs> That's great to hear. I'm really refreshing actually, because I think. People do get a bit obsessed with it, don't they? But let's move on to the the kind of general topic of insight, which is which is good. I haven't really specifically covered this before, but talk about the water solubility of cannabinoids. So at the top of this, cannabinoids are naturally fat soluble and not water soluble. Why is that an issue? Sure. So cannabinoids are, as you suggest, are, are lipid soluble. And and most people when they do what they claim to do in a water-soluble product, 
are not really using a, a product that's water soluble. It, it, it's still lipid soluble. So there, there are two techniques that are that are most common, different than ours. One of them uses a, a technique called nanoparticle technology, and what that means is you take the you know you take the the powder and you grind it down into an incredibly small particle size between one and a hundred nanometers. And when you place that in liquid, it looks like it's dissolving, but it really isn't. It's just too small to be seen by the naked eye. And it actually goes into suspension. The other technique that people use is microemulsion, where again, it's in liquid, it's not really, it's not really dissolving, it's just it's sort of coexisting with the water. Now, our process we think is, is superior for a couple of reasons. Number one, nanoparticle technology, in our view and the view of, of many scientists, is potentially hazardous. Nanoparticles are so small that they've never, they never were introduced to the body naturally in nature because they didn't exist. And the same argument can be made about nanoparticles in the environment. I mean, the environment never had to deal with a with particle size this small. So there are potential hazards both to, to the environment and, and, to, and to human health. And I don't want to be alarmist, but that exists. And, and I've got an absurd amount of science that can support that if you would like me to, to send you links. But even if that weren't the case, the issue of bioavailability is really important. And there was a great study done uh, in March of this year, among humans actually, where one study, they studied the bioavailability of water-soluble CBD, us, versus the bioavailability of lipid-soluble CBD, everybody else, and found that water-soluble CBD is 4.5 times more bioavailable. That's pretty significant. So what that means is it gets into your body faster, probably lasts longer, and probably requires a, you know, a lesser dose. So we have tons of anecdotal evidence that suggests that when people use our product, they have a, a more immediate effect and it lasts longer. Like, I, like I'll give you, again, this is all anecdotal, but I'll, we have a guy that's been using our product for a condition called neuropathy, which is extreme pain. And he's very large. I mean, he probably weighs in excess of 300 pounds. And he's taking five milligrams of our, of our product. I mean, that is a relatively modest dose. And it seems to have a quick and long lasting effect. So we think that, that in part, it's because we're more, more bioavailable than, than other products, lipid soluble products. We also think that one of the reasons that it tends to work better is we actually deliver the dose that we promise. And, and you know, one would think that that would be a, a normal occurrence, but at least in the United States, in the CBD business, people don't always deliver what they promise. And we're, we are vigilant and crazed about making certain that our dosage is what we, we say on the label. We've just got incredible, rigorous testing, independent third-party testing to make sure that what we promise is what we deliver. And we also are very crazed in terms of our manufacturing. We're, we're making all of our, our products in, in what's called a CGMP in CGMP certified facilities, that means certified good manufacturing practices. So this, the same kind of facilities that one would use to make food and beverage or nutraceuticals are the places where we make our, our products. And so we think that delivers a, a better experience and more efficacy. That, that's more than what you asked about about nano, but... <laughs> that's great. No, no, no. So to recap, basically, and I'll add a bit in that because it's lipid soluble, it has to get metabolized down in the stomach. That takes a long time. Whereas this alternative technology means that it gets into your system much quicker and more of it gets in there as well. Yes. And just to be clear, so the way our product works is you take the active ingredient in powdered form and you mix it with a proprietary powder ingredient, which includes an, some effervescent materials. All the materials in our proprietary powder are all natural FDA approved and food grade. Food grade suggests that they're inexpensive and you can get them any place in the world. But part of those, but part of that, that effervescent quality also promotes more bioavailability, more bioavailability in the body. So it's, it's a combination of, of the, the water soluble delivery system and the proprietary ingredients 
which get the active ingredient into the body. Yeah, which is great. And that solves quite a few problems I expect in this ingestibles market or edibles market, however you want to describe it, because because you can have a much more immediate effect from what you're taking. Yes, you can have a more immediate effect. You can have a you can have a, a, a more assured dose. And you can also integrate it into somebody's daily lifestyle. So if one can add our, our products to, to any food or beverage, it can be used with, with meals or snacks or, or drinks. And, and that just makes it more convenient, easier to use, and better, I think, both for the, for the consumer and the potential caregiver. So the very rudimentary CBD market is the, is the tinctures under the tongue, and that was the beginnings. And now more sophisticated things are coming out, such as yours. What are the type of products this opens up to then? What are the type of products that you sure. see? Well, I think, I think what it really does is it opens up any food or beverage. And we've had people explore combining our material, combining our powder in, I mean, I'll just give you some of the, the examples. So in the beverage category, just take the most popular beverages in the world, spring water, coffee, tea, energy drinks, energy shots, fruit juices, and then the food side of the business, we have people who are talking about combining our, our products with with popcorn, with pasta, with actually with, with other active ingredients, with other wellness-based active ingredients in combination. So again, because we deliver as a powder, which can be added at the point of production, it makes it incredibly in, uh, easy to integrate into pretty much anything. When we have a, for example, we've got a, a group in the United States who's interested in integrating our, our products into, into cocktails at upscale restaurants. So if you see it as sort of like adding a, either an energy shot or a, a shot of espresso, what it does is it takes, a, it takes a, you know, a popular common product and automatically makes it into a premium product that delivers functional health and wellness benefits. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's great that you've got hot and cold as well. It can work in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as we come towards the end, are you just mainly active in North America or are you looking at Europe as well? No, we are, we're definitely looking at Europe. I mean, we're in the middle of lots of partnership discussions in Europe, in Australia, in Latin America. Our goal is to, is to distribute this, this product globally. And in certain cases, well, in the case of CBD, for example, we can manufacture centrally in an efficient way and export globally. But in, in certain cases, it would be more efficient to, to license our technology and manufacture on a local basis for local exports. So we're in the middle of a number of discussions to, to license our product in, in Europe for distribution to the EU. Uh, the same is true about manufacturing our product in South America, specifically, we're, we're having discussions in, in Colombia and actually in Uruguay to manufacture centrally and then export globally. But I mean, I think what's really interesting about this space is that the, the need for it and the benefits for, for these products really don't stop at, at any state, provincial or, or local border. I mean, the, the good that they can do is really is global. So within the constraints of the, the law, we are trying to make certain that, that we can supply these products to as many places in the world as possible, which actually does open up one other area I wouldn't mind talking about. Sure, I know you're, sure. you're an attorney by training, and, and there are actually many attorneys in Europe that are, that are quite interested in this. So we've taken this technology and we've applied it to the area of botanical terpenes. So what that means is, so botanical terpenes Terpenes are, are, in effect, are the aromatic qualities of fruits, plants, and vegetables. And the terpenes that we're using, which we're calling biological terpene, uh, botanical terpenes, sorry, don't have any CBD or THC in them, but they do come from fruits, plants, and vegetables. So what's interesting is they deliver many of the same health and wellness benefits of cannabis or CBD. In fact, the names of these botanical terpenes tend to mimic the, the cultivar names of, of cannabis. And the molecular structure is, is remarkably similar. And they provide health and wellness benefits and moods, but there's no, there's no intoxication or impairment. They're non-psychotropic. And then, of course, because people have been eating fruits, plants, and vegetables in cultures all over the world for literally 
tens of thousands of years, it tends to be a way of skirting local regulations. So for example, I, I guess in, in the EU, if something has been consumed regularly by people prior to, I think it's 1994, it can in effect skirt the, the, the novel foods regulations. In the United States, our FDA says the grandfather date is 1997. But anyway, I mean, it's hard to argue that people have not been eating oranges and grapes prior to 1994 and 1997. So subsequently, our attorneys have informed us that we can we can import, export, or sell our botanical terpenes any place in the world, and we have. And we have two primary uh, botanical terpenes that, that are that are quite popular. One of them um, we're calling an energy terpene, and another a, a calming terpene. Both of them are available in powder form. Interestingly, you need less powder to you need less powder to make the the oil based terpenes powder water soluble. So it, this is it's interesting. So for example, we can ship fifty thousand doses of terpenes, either energy or calm, any place in the world, and the total package size is six kilos. <laughs> so I mean, to me, that that opens up a, a very big market, and we have been. We've been selling these things globally, and many folks see this either as an alternative or a an adjunct to the um, to the the CBD market. And, and one other point, I'm sorry, but I, you, I'm, I'm, this is this is fascinating. So one of the things that terpenes do is when you combine them with cannabis or CBD, they enhance the entourage effect of those cannabinoids quite dramatically, and that is even true with the CBD isolate. So you can take CBD isolate, which in theory has no entourage effect, add botanical terpenes, and it delivers the entourage effect. And again, I mean, I've got an absurd amount of science about this, so if you'd like me to to send it to you, I will. There was a a big study published uh, in the British Journal of Pharmacology, ironically written by two of the chemists that worked on the GW Pharma Epidiolox brand. So they're the ones that, that, that have that are going to support all of my points. It doesn't matter <laughs> well, I'm a non-scientist like me. That's quite big backing there. Yeah, I'd love to read some of that stuff, actually. It's a, it's a fascinating area. Well, look, Dean, thank you. It's been great, and there's lots to come. I think it's really interesting. You've got you know brands and products, but you've also got this ingredient side to what you're doing as well. So it'd be great to get you on in, uh, in six months or so and see how you're getting on again. I'd love to. I'd love to, and, and, and maybe at some point in life we'll be able to see each other in person again oh yes when this dreadful covid thing's over yes we <laughs> great okay anyway well thank you again for having me on the show i, I appreciate it real pleasure 